so welcome everybody to an episode today on my channel at the Midlands Outdoors today so we're going to be journeying our way from this disused canal line all the way through the Lisos uh, again covering a bit of history see if we can see some wildlife as well because at this time of year it's absolutely wonderful to see the wildlife there's no wind just there'll be a nice day just have a walk around really but obviously we're in December now but obviously this channel as well it's going to be a great year for 2022 got loads of content upcoming especially if you love walking and you love walking videos and that kind of stuff you may have seen me before on my other channel Urbex Street Productions but this channel is going to be based all about my walking so hope you enjoy so let's get into it and let's get down the canal line but I've got something right behind to show you before I get down there so let's take a look so what you can see behind me now is actually a sign saying Lapple Canal Trust Dudley number no. two canal restoration scheme and you can see like a board there look it's got like restoration of the Dudley number no. two canal and it says opened in 1798 linking Neverton to Selio because obviously this canal line from Horn Basin runs from the Neverton line all the way to Horn Basin it cuts off at a part but it used to actually run even further than that but it says uh, from there to Mukolo to Manaway. So there used to actually be a portal, I believe, a uh, Lapo tunnel. It used to go under. I don't know how it went under the canal. I don't quite know what it would have looked like back in those days. But you can obviously see pictures down here. Again, what the canal looked like when I was going to restore it. And obviously repaired by the council look. And you see photos there as well. There's even old photos up there in 1955 and 1965. And again, William Shenstone about the whole park. Um, and it says there, it's a bit of history about William Shenstone was a re-owned English poet and one of the earliest practitioners of landscape gardening through the development of his estate, the Lisos, which surrounds the whole area where he was born. So you can just see a house on there looking at. Very old photo, just looking up very close. Looking at that. But that one's pretty interesting as well. That one there, I think that one is actually along... I don't know where that one actually is. That's along the... Actually, no. I'm guessing that's probably down the Neverton line, I think. Because I do recognise the bridge. I could be right. It actually might be down there, but... Let's get down the canal. Let's go and have a quick look and see what's down there. So, yeah, I'm going to have to say... I don't know if many of the locals who maybe watch this. The Lisos Park is obviously one of my favourite places for the wildlife. And you can even hear, hear now the birds singing especially at this time of year which you can see there's no leaves on the trees it gives it more better to find birds to see them where they are because obviously in the summer you can't really see the birds much clear with all the leaves on the trees because it sort of blocks much of the views out but there is again the wildlife down there is spectacular you've got woodpeckers there's that much bird life within the pool which is situated right down the bottom which we'll take a look later but this disused canal line is pretty much mad though because you can see just looking down here, you can see where it used to be. I mean, how overgrown this canal line is altogether now. You can just imagine when it was actually all water running all the way through this, taking the barges all the way down to the next section of the canal line, through to the Celio Canarborn section. But, well, it's just, it's like I said, it's just amazing how much things change over time. It just changes from one thing to another, but just absolutely crazy but I will show you the, the little bit down here which where you can see where the canal actually used to be so yeah you can see look with this uh, little canal part you can see where it goes down like in a dip so if you're looking down there look you can obviously see where the canal where the water would actually run all the way through going down you can also tell where it's just a bit overgrown as well it's pretty much really amazing just to see the way it's all changed but it goes pretty much further. This canal line, like I mentioned, runs all the way to Horn Basin. Whether many of you actually know where Horn Basin actually is, down this canal line at the back. It's actually at the back of Liso, it's towards where Coomswood is. But again, there is much history down the, the Coomswood section as well. You had the Horn Basin with history. We will be covering that later in the year next year, going more, over more history. Because again, it was a big thing for the house there in the Horn Basin because you had Horn Colliery which served the coal and that coal was transported all the way along the canal line maybe down this section as well to be transported to another one but obviously linking to Neverton it gives it good access to the black country from going from one side to another through Neverton tunnel bringing out the goods out towards the Dudley section so it's quite a long canal you can just imagine what went on back in the days all those goods especially Stuarts and Lloyds down the canal as well it was actually a prosperous industry with the canal line because it allowed it to transport its goods up and down as well 
but again that's pretty much the uh, the canal line down here which you can see all overgrown disused waiting for maybe its future in many many years time we don't know what's going to go on with it i mean if there are restoration of things going on with this canal line just imagine if they do restore it imagine the water running through it in many years time if it even is possible we don't quite know what the, the future is like i mentioned but again if there was water running through this you could just imagine again the amount of wildlife which would be lurking down this section of the canal the bird life obviously how dead it is at the moment apart from the wild birds and the trees just imagine all the again water birds coming down here your, your moor hens and different kinds of other water birds so yeah let's keep on walking let's keep going down let's get to the Lisos park it isn't actually too far down here but we'll see again we'll see what history what wildlife is actually lurking down within the Lisos itself the amazing views down there as well Yeah, coming now into the Lisos Park, now nearly parting off to it, you can actually see that during the winter time you will actually get water within this section of the canal and it starts as the further you get down, the more water that starts to appear down the canal line and you see down there. But the reason why there isn't water down this section because it's pretty much really overgrown after all the plant life is actually soaked up all the water down there. Just imagine all the, the sides are called the bramble as well doing that. But quickly walking down, there is like different sections down here which you can see. I mean there is like a little brick wall like parted off the section here. I'll just quickly show you that in a second. But again look how much water's in the bottom of there, so it's absolutely really buggy. You can see like all the white patches as well down the corner. We've had quite a lot we've had a bit of snow last night when I woke up at really early. It was actually really covered, but obviously because we got mist, it's melted the whole lot nearly. But it's the, for this time of year though, you could, you could expect like many many years ago you'd probably got loads of snow towards November and December but nowadays it's pretty much more like you get the odd dusting of it but you don't really get much anymore. You can see just another part of the canal line just there and you can see the brick wall which run all the way across. I will show you like a little bit more features of it. But again there, there is actually like a little drain running down so when the water was actually going through. Now you can actually see a bit of steel running across here, the steel sides to the uh, the canal side look, all overgrown and I see all leaves over it running down. But it's just nice just again just to see the features, what I'm here on the, the Lisos itself down the Lapa Canal. Again it ties into quite a lot of history, mainly back in the black country days the way this was used, what was going on here. There's just much to learn about it really, so much. Yeah, you can see how much wildlife is over the Lisos. You've got the squirrels, look. Obviously, that's the first squirrel seen at the moment, just down there, going all up to the trees. There's loads of the Lisos. I've seen plenty around the tree areas. And obviously, people have been taking photos of them, popping them on Facebook. Again, they are pretty nice creatures just to look at and watch them. They're pretty fascinating at times. Just the way they climb the trees look that fast when they jump from one tree to another. Well again there is much more down here, which there isn't just those, there is like again. I have seen badgers down here, foxes in the daytime, but it's very rare a spot in them, sometimes you can. Especially the winter, they do lurk around on quiet days, and lucky enough you can spot them. Again I've seen badgers in local areas, off more woodland, I've seen one badger in the daytime. But it's capturing though, I do love to see them. They are again fascinating creatures. So here we are, we've arrived at the Lisos now, just down the back down here which you can see coming into it and obviously that's the coming towards the end of that canal line which stretches even further down, it's quite a longer bit of a walk down there though but you can just obviously imagine as well how far that actually went back in the day stretching all the way to Neverton, just one more quick look down there. Yeah so you can obviously get a better view now of it. 
and you've got all the reeds that are all overgrown as well, you can just see how overgrown this part is. Got a bit of snow here as well on the ground, look. Just a little bit left after it's all melted. It's really quiet over here for like a day like today though. I must imagine that it's starting to rain as well, the drip's coming down. But it's again a nice part to take your dog, come for a general stroll as well. Obviously see some bird life just in there then, some uh, blue tits. But look at the views over there, you've got a nice view of the park looking over. You'll get a better view in a minute as we're walking a bit further down. I am actually going to tell you a bit of history as well about the Lisos. I'm going to get it up online and tell you a bit more about it. But just look at that though, and look, at, look how overgrown that is actually taken over, look. All that plant life in there. So imagine all the insects which are at the bottom of that as well. Get like different kinds of wildlife hiding within the reeds down there. Wow, look at the view of that. You've got a nice view of the pool down the bottom, stretching all the way down. It's a better view than when I actually come up here last time because all this was pretty much all overgrown. Wow, look at that for some great shots. Take some nice photographs of this in a second. But I can just see different wildlife over there. So this is some birds flying around, magpies in the distance. I'm, actually, I'm gonna actually have a zoom in in a bit and see what I can actually see. But just looking down though, you can obviously see the path down there, but there is actually fish within the lease. There's this big carp, there's a variety of different fish in there and different, I think there is um, some type of crayfish, but I don't know how true that is in the bottom of that water. But there could be anything lurking under there. I don't know what it actually is under. But again, just one more pan around just to show you the amazing view of that. It's amazing just to see. Especially in the winter time, you've got that nice view of that there. So yeah, I've got a bit of history for you on the Lisos Park itself. So it says the local history, the Lisos is a 57 hectare public park containing the remains of one of the most important and influential landscapes of the 18th century. The garden at Lisos was designed by the Pope William Shenstone beginning in 1743 and continuing up until his death in 1763 so you can just see the dates of his park just imagine when William Shenstone had the whole of this back in the 17th century and obviously how he had all the land and designed all that put all the trees here back then you see how old the trees would have possibly been there is really old trees over there and I can see um, a big tree over the back very tall I haven't seen that one before I don't know if you can get to it but I do know the golf club um, it's situated right the way around the back so you can walk past it and go around it and again the, this isn't just the only pool on the Lee, so there is multiple pools I don't know where it goes round to but I believe I think it goes round that way somewhere and there is pools up where I'm pointing that way so that's the way we're going to walk later coming up that side I have walked that side to go round and I realise the pools aren't that way I think they're straight that way later so when I go down it's got to remember to take that route. So yeah, again, more history. We've got something about the 18th century woodland. Um, we've got something here. So it dates back to the late 1740s. Uh, the return, the woodland to its historic uh, layout. Uh, the project at the Grade 1 listed park have received 1.3 million from the Heritage Lottery Fund. And I uh, see the 18th century beach water dam and cascade as well as pools. And uh, again, cascades at Virgil's Grove brought back to life but you can see when I go down there you'll see like a little dam which they've actually redeveloped over the years and obviously this park was actually lottery funded uh, mainly this is why they have done like improvement stuff with this improved the fishing pegs which are at the bottom this made it a bit more better by cutting things back I don't know whether they will actually add any more to this park within the future I have heard there are more plans for this place within the near future um, Again, there is like little facilities over there. I don't know what's over there on the car park. Um, again, you just imagine uh, this place and the future of it. I mean, I just hope it actually stays like this. It is, it is really better than what it was many, many years ago. Because I do remember coming to the Lisos. It wasn't, wasn't great back then because it was more like overgrown. Not like you have it today where it's all cut back and you've got the nice views. It was really muddy as well down the paths. I do know they've improved the paths down here. 
which is really great for like a park like this. It gives it access for people to come down without worries, to be honest. And they've improved like the bridges going across as well. So there is actually like a little bridge down the path down there. But yeah, there is actually a bit more history on here, uh, sucking down. You've even got the picturesque garden, which is further at the back. And that is actually, um, Shenstone created the Lisos from the farmland between 1743 and 1763. Rather than following the fashionable uh, geometric layout of the time, he adopted a new and radical approach, creating a landscape that both followed and enhanced the natural features of the Lisos. In doing so, he recognised as creating a garden which represents uh, the very beginning of the picturesque England and her uh, landscape movement. So again, nice piece, a lot of little history of the Lisos there. Of uh, that little walled garden, which is right at the back, we may come to that later just to take a look around the side of it. I think it is actually open to go round at certain times of the year. We'll have to have a look at it because again, it's a much fascinating piece of history, the way that dates back as well. But I'm going to get my P900 out. Let's have a zoom in and see what we can actually see down here. Wow. Look at, the, look at the wildlife over here, you've even got robins, look. That robin is so tame. Wow. Again, it's just lovely to see birds like this. Again, much wildlife, look. You see how it's coming to me, look, it thinks I've got food. Oh, bless it. <laughs> lovely birds, I love robins. I mean, the colour of them as well this time of year. You can see how they're pretty much really bright orange, look. Now it's feeding as well, it's actually feeding off the ground. It's getting some like little things, insects within the cracks of the rocks on the floor and different like little seeds as well which I'm hiding. They, might, they remind me of wrens as well, I mean wrens and little birds but they're kind of similar. Absolutely beautiful birds those on. Again on the P900, look at, look at the view of the robins over there, there's two of them. Wow, two robins. Feeding off the ground, look. Absolutely stunning views of those on the path. Wow. Obviously the ones fired off, look. Still got a one there feeding. Wow, that is pretty much amazing just to see that. Wow. Yeah, again, it's coming closer, look. <laughs> Stunning view of that. Look at the colour on the uh, the breast. So you can see even more bird life, look, we've even got wood pigeons deciding the depths of the trees, look over there. I thought I was in the, um, the kingfisher when I zoomed out. <laughs> oh well, found some magpies, look, as well, just hiding up in the depths of the trees about the top. Again, loads of wild birds over here. Seeing if I can spot any different ones, but... By the looking of it, I haven't seen any other birds at the moment. I've seen pigeons, that robin, and a few other different ones just lurking around, just looking around down here. Usually, you can actually get the kingfisher, which actually comes down, but judging by today, I can't really seem to see anything at all. Maybe I might have to go a bit further down, I think, because I'm a bit too high up at the moment and get a better view from the bottom of the pool. I'm a bit of a further walk down, but Looking at the view there is it's absolutely pretty really stunning just to see the views at the top of the mirror. Ain't it wonderful though just to see the wildlife up close? I've been having that robin, it was literally touching to the bottom of my legs down here, it was literally coming so close. I've never seen a robin that time. It's I think it is actually still out. No, it's gone further down the path, it's actually gone down the bottom down there now. But absolutely fascinating and amazing just to see that. I mean, even if I've just got that today, well, again, it's still a bit of interesting wildlife. But you can, if you're very quiet enough, you can hear the wildlife altogether. 
You see how quiet it is, you can just hear the surroundings. Here's some like even birds are far back over there as well. So let's get down these steps. I've actually noticed as well whether many of you actually know what this is. There is again like a little looks like tracks to me. Maybe it's like a little miniature railway thing running across here because you can see like that like miniature track. Do many of you know what it is? Feel free again to drop it in the comments again. I am interested about that as well. Could be an interesting piece of history. All right, let's get down to the bottom of these stairs. Oh, this one thing that I hate is like long stairs, which are like this going all the way to the bottom. Again, just coming down the stairs, you can just see the views down here, look. Yeah, coming to the bottom now, you can actually see a better view of the pool itself now. And she got like a little overflow system running underneath me to spot at the top of me right now but you can see it's pretty much really clear within the pool which you can see down there like a little depth down the bottom onto the leaves right at the bottom of the pool down there and there is again a majority of the range of different fish which are on this pool you've got your car little roach i think there is perch in here as well which hides within the edges oh there is actually a dead carp down there look at that this is just hanging, it's literally shredded all the way. So there is definitely some big fish in here then. I don't know what has actually done that, whether it's died naturally. Or something's uh, something shredded it. Well again, you can just see a majority of the wildlife now up into the bottom. You've got your like, your water birds now coming up. There is seagulls on here. You've got your mallards. I have seen some more hens as well, just lurking around the edge. You get your more hens as well, a bit more further up on the different kinds of pools after where the dams are at the top. But it's coming around the corner now, there is actually like a little sign telling you about the different wildlife which you can get on here, the birds. So I will quickly show you that. Yeah, just quickly coming round, you can see just on this board, you've got all your bird life, so you can just see there. You've got your kingfisher, that's mostly been a popular one at the moment. A majority of people have actually seen that on a group on Facebook, the Lisa's group. They've been sending photos like this, really fantastic. You've got your wagtails, grey herons I've seen on here. I've seen the moorhens, you've got your Canada goose, uh, coot, and you're going to gain your mallards. You can just see a, like, an overview map of the, the pool where I am now. So this is called Priory Pool, as it states on there. It does look like a really big pool in total of, of the view look. But of gain, we need to go around this bit and then walk all the way around, go up to where the dams are. But again, even great crested grebes, I've seen those over here, beautiful birds. But again, I've seen those over the Lisos. So right, let's uh, go and make our journey a bit further down and just go and see what we can see at the top. coming around the side of the pool now so we've come from where the big tall bit of the canal line is down the back so we're actually coming down to this nice little part now because obviously the colours of the trees as well on here so this bit down here I'm guessing if I am right it would actually take us up to where those dams are which I was mentioning earlier where they restored them you can just see the wrap again back corners of the pool and obviously again this pool is actually fed by like a little stream system from one side to another but there is actually two streams i believe again there is streams down that other back section down there you can just see the stream down here when they're going a bit further down and again you can see a bit of a better view of the stream right now that's going all the way down it's absolutely beautiful as well you've got all these different kinds of plant life 
again different surroundings you're going further down you've got those like nice ferns down the bottom is that much different plants over the lisos wow absolutely beautiful view look at the i mean the way it's all designed the stream coming down even you've got this like little bridge going across look at that it's nice in the autumn though when all the leaves drop off you've got that nice little effect with all the leaves look absolutely nice beautiful view Yeah, it's actually starting to rain now. I can actually feel all the drips of rain come down. They haven't actually forecast this today. But the sky, I mean, it's gone absolutely really dull, which you can see. It's gone like a white colour. Obviously, we won't get any more snow now because I've actually noticed it's started to actually warm up. It's gone a bit more warmer. But it's gone a bit further up. I think we've actually come up to like another little system up here. I don't know whether it's that little, actually, you know, there is. It's actually another pool a bit further up. So I'll show you this second pool. But again, coming up, that is just absolutely really amazing just to see the uh, nice stunning views of that coming up, look. The stream going all the way down. Absolutely stunning. So there is again, look at the scenery of this lot, little bit here going under. So you've got like, all the yew trees coming up. And you've got like another like dam system coming all the way down, which you can see flowing all the way down this little bit that, that, that section there is actually flowing from the pool which is just up here so I'll quickly show you the other pool which is at the top and again there is like another pool behind that and that pool is flowing into this pool so you can obviously see how many pools are possibly these on the lisos I think there's another couple more and then it and then that's the final pool at the very top and it goes into more of like a, a bit more of a wooded area wow Again, stunning views, look at this. Again, a nice little pool, just at the top up here. Again, it's very clear as well, this pool, which you can see. If I just look inside, and look over, you can just see the depths of the look. At the bottom, you see all the leaves which have gone down in there. That's a little overflow system to where it's actually run into the, into the next pool, look. So you can see there, the way it's all flowing down, look. It's going like a spiral, going all the way down into the next section underneath this dam but you can just see the, the way the dam's gone round as well look pretty much really amazing architecture just to see that but again if I just look over this bit again for you I'm saying there is a bit of colour to the water though but I don't think there is any like fish in here I don't quite know there is actually fish at the very top one if I just have a look in this like, little section here you will probably see some like little fry in the summer, like little fish that come up and down. And it definitely is a next pool, I think. But again, I can just see like mist lurking as well within the distance up here. Probably because we're really high up as well, that's why I'm feeling the rain up within the Lisos. Right, let's keep on moving our way up. So we're going to journey our way around this way now, get some nice stunning scenery. And then we'll make our way to the dam, which I think the dam is actually the next section of the pool right at the top. Let's go make our way up there for you. to the next corner section you can actually see there is actually another little pool which actually runs from the next section that's actually what's taking the stream a bit further down which you can see a bit of a view from there look, and all the way down so it's actually this little pool here that's on the bottom you do actually get some odd wildlife within this pool you get some odd uh, again different water birds oh my god there's a kingfisher well, i'm gonna have to get my camera out guys 
So yeah, just getting my camera out, obviously just speaking to some locals just, and I was telling about the Kingfisher and where they've actually seen it. I've seen it with my eyes and the second I got my camera out, it was gone. They are really fast birds, Kingfish, and if you can capture one, they are really stunning. And that's actually looking right now, you can actually see, I've been watching this squirrel at the same time, he's been just walking up and down that tree at a fast pace. I've been watching it with the locals. You see it there, look. So if that Kingfisher does come back though, I will see if I can get some nice glimpses of it. It might actually take a couple more visits to actually come up. Oh, look at that, it's jumped. Look here, mate, that jump then. They are spectacular animals, those uh, squirrels, the way they actually jump like that though. So no, no sign of the Kingfisher now. It would have been a spectacular experience just to zoom in with that and get some nice views. I can see a more here now, however, down the back, but that's just about it on this pool now. I think it was just like for a quick like dip and visit and it went. Maybe they do come back, I don't quite know. I mean, they are, they are bizarre birds because they go from one place to another, they can be in one area, then they'll go back to where they come from. But I have heard that the top of the next pool, the top where I'm going to, which isn't too far to end up by, they've actually been seen up there by the island coming up and down. There is more pool of them, there isn't just one. So if it does come back, if I do see it, then I've got my chances maybe on the second pool maybe. But if not today, then I will have to try and come back up with my camera, just to do a bit of like camera work. But the shaman didn't get that though, that was an amazing view from there. Let's just keep going and see what we can end up seeing. We never know what we else we might see with up the Lisa's part in a bit, the further back depths of it. Because obviously the end of it actually comes up to the far woodland from the last pool, which comes up in a little bit, which is round the back. And there is again, there's such an amazing view from the top there overlooking Al Zoeen. You can see much of Al Zoeen, the surrounding area as well. It's an amazing view. So we'll get to that a bit later, but let's just keep journeying around and see if we can see this Kingfisher or any other wildlife. Again, stunning views up there. And I've just seen some other different kinds of things as well. I've just seen some birds which I haven't filmed, like more blue tits in the trees. Again, so many squirrels up the leaves, even another one. Just climbing up the tree there, look. There's so much. But this kingfisher, I'm hoping that would get some good news if we try and see it. But it depends on where it's gone to. And I've actually spotted a jay now. There's a jay in the tree over there, so let's see if we can get some views. Yeah, no, look, I can't do that. I've just seen a jay. Always when I see a jay, I never capture one. They're that fast. By the time I've even got my camera out to try and find it, I was trying to spot it on the camera. It just flies off because they're very fast birds. It is in there somewhere still, gone somewhere. I just could not see it at the moment. Because again, there is leaves on the trees down there, so it's obviously blocking the view from it. There is much wildlife, like jays and other kinds of different birds which you can spot over the lisos. But you have to look very carefully when trying to spot them as well. Because they could be lurking anywhere, especially in the tall trees over the back as well. So we've also got another pool as well, which is going all the way down the bottom as well. Look. We've got little weir coming all the way down there as well. Look. Nice view of that. And you called again to see that one. That one's actually leading to the next pool, which is right the way at the top, just over here. And this is the pool where I've been told where the kingfisher has also been spotted as well. Similar to the other pool, but it's again, it's just much more bigger. Down there, you can see all the wildlife as well. Stunning views again of this like, nice little pool. So where I've heard where they're spotted, it's a bit further back over there, but there is like a little island where I've been told. And they've been spotted coming back and forth from there. Again, there is fish in this one. How I know there's fish within this part of the Lisos, in the summer I've actually spotted some uh, little fry lurking in the edges over there so there's got to be some decent sized fish within the depths of this pool over there but again so I'm going to take a straw around and see if I can see anything 
So yeah, this is that next little bit by the island is where I've been told. I haven't seen nothing at the moment. I am carefully looking up in like, the depths of the trees and stuff. See if I can see this like, little kingfisher. I don't think it has come this way. Maybe it's actually gone back. It's keeping my eyes peeled because they are small birds. And you can miss them. So yeah, with kingfishers, the birds like, if you've ever seen one, I've actually seen a couple down the Starbridge Canal. There's loads down there. There's more than what there is here in the leaf, so I've spotted one after the other. I've not having my big camera on me at the time. I've seen them, I've seen them like in the depths, going all the way down, diving into the water, catching some little fish. So again, canal lines are pretty much the great place to go and see them, especially up where Coombswood Canal is, up the Horn Basin. I've seen the uh, kingfish up there as well lurking. You see them all better on canal lines because it's just one straight line. But I just literally could not see it at the moment. Or any sign of the kingfish up here. Might have to have a travel back down I think just to see later if I can capture anything on photos or video for you. But Nah, don't think we'll have no luck up here at the moment. You've got to literally wait here for quite a long period of time just to spot it. But yeah, again, nice little view of the pool though. Look, so look at the architecture of that little dam down there. This bit is pretty really amazing as well. The way the stream comes down like this. Look, like you know, little dam sections, one there. Again, another one here, accompanied by the bridge, which is built there. Look, going over on look. It's a bit further down there. Again, that is really stunning as well. To see the leaves which are falling over here as well, down the backs. It's really amazing. So yeah, going back to bird life as well. I remember going back in the, I think it was the early summer. Uh, I don't know if it was last year. I think it was actually last year when I captured this. Going back in the summertime, I spotted, um, a nut hatch which was in the tree that nut hatch is actually situated further at the back of there i will show you where i saw it but again i was watching it it was literally close like from where i am here to where that is there and it's just amazing to see it i caught it in my eye going in and out the tree but it's spectacular just to see wild birds like that it's just so many just to see if you could try and spot them as well especially within the depths over here i mean you will get the woodpeckers over here as well but again there is other birds over here which have been spotted i do know uh harris hawks i've been spotted over here loose harris hawks i've seen them on the facebook group the Liso is one and they've been spotted like over the depths of the over here as well at the back the woodland so yeah i think that's coming to the end of the Liso's now from the at the pool and the main park is pretty much situated over the back and it, that, this does actually go to the far back of, um, I believe it's Quinton and the top end of Owls Owen from the back of B&Q. But I have done it before, I've walked all the way from there and come all the way down from the road which comes from B&Q down to Owls Owen itself. It is a long walk. But you can see the wildlife in here, just listen. See all the wild birds. I want to do a few now. It's got some stunning views, some nice little like uh, sceneries for you. Before I head to that a little view part, just to show you the nice view over Howl's Owen. The, the view from up there is pretty cool, so it's probably going to be really good to go and have a look at. Especially there's no wind today. I've, it's one of those days where it's the first time I've come out in quite a while. It's not been that windy. And most of the days I've come out, you've got the wind. It does affect your video work as well. But let's go and take a stroll up here and go and look at the nice scenery.
yeah this is it this is actually where i've seen that little nut hatch within the tree just further up so if i just get a bit more up here for you i can show you it's literally where i'm pointing you can see a big tall tree sticking up just the first one before the fence there and then there is like a little hole above and that's where it was actually nesting i don't know if i've actually got a bit of video content to show you i'll have i'll have a quick look so yeah i don't know if i'll be able to play this in a sec for you i'm gonna let it like render a little bit but you can just see this is actually like a little bit of a clip i put a bit of music over it i will play it now for you you can see there look at that i actually caught the nut ash which was just right there look literally feeding his babies but literally yeah that was literally right here i will show you have a quick look yeah it was just literally right there so that gap up there where the hole is there was literally coming in and out of that so next year there will be some uh nut hatches nesting from there so you will get some nice glances within the uh the spring next year coming up to the lisos again it's the best time to get a majority of the amazing night like, nature views nature shots and like today though i have seen quite a fair bit of nature and wildlife coming up but not much as what i expected today though and obviously catching that kingfisher is really really hard and he's got to take a bit of skill to try and catch that but again just thought i might mention that to you So yeah, here we go. Here's a view of Halzo in the whole of Halzo in itself, the town centre, the church. Again, distant views, absolutely stunning views in the distance with all the mist lurking and just like lingering there right in the distance where the hills are as well. Gives that nice like scenery to it. But it was eight months ago since I come up here just to look at the view. And I remember zooming in to Halzo with my old camera what I had. This is actually a new camera which I've got, it's the P950. Apparently it's a bit more better quality so we'll have a bit of a zoom in. absolutely stunning views it is really amazing just to see how far that actually really zooms in and surprised though i mean considering the view as well obviously how that point was in the distance which you could just see a view of whichborough hill which is right in the distance absolutely amazing just to see that and again there is many views like this as well if you've got clent hills water hill you get some amazing views like this we will be heading up to there next year as well having another good look up clent hills and that surrounding area getting some views wildlife for the game more like here jay down there now see if i can get some glimpses of it oh wow i've actually got the jay look there's the jay there's actually two jays so you can see another jay there look 
Wow, fascinating birds. Look at that. Can't believe that. It's absolutely fantastic. It's amazing just to see that jay. You know what? I was after one of them for quite a long time. Just a picture, just a film. Got some nice stunning photographs of the jay as well. Absolutely amazing. But yeah, nice way just to end the video. Just up here overlooking the view. Eight months ago when I was here filming this location. The stunning views, the nature in here. But yeah, I think what it is time to do now is to head home. Going back all the way I've come through the Lisos, in and out and back home. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please hit the subscribe button. I do much appreciate it. And I'll probably see you soon in my next video. So don't forget to stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button as well. You will see some more vids of the surrounding area, canal lines, more of the black country. Again, journeying our way through different tunnels. Again, Starbridge Canal is one place that I really do want to go. So check it out. See you soon. Enjoy the nice scenery on the way back now. And uh, see ya.